Oh my god. Here's some inversion for you. Never have I looked so washed out and tired. Woo! Also, a quick life tip of the day. If you want to keep your teeth white, drink literally everything from a straw. Except for water. Look, this metal straw is so cute. Oh. Welcome back, Jack. Apparently, we're ready for the English English videos again. My whom whom video was full of comments, which never happens, so I felt seen. But anyways, I'm gonna ride that wave <laughs> and keep going. I'm writing the last episode of Indigenous Now, Aboriginal Australia, so watch out for that. And if it's your first time with me, I hate it, it's me. I teach English for the people. I'm a dancer, I'm an artist, I'm a big ol' hoe, and I teach English too. So, you know, versatility. So the title of this video, oh, don't forget to subscribe. So the title of this video is how to sound like a fluent, yes, I use the word fluent, and not native speaker of English. Because let it be known on this channel, we do believe you do not need to be a native speaker to be an expert in English. Yes, I'm a native speaker, but in my studies, in my schooling, in my travels, in my various teaching jobs, I have met English teachers, Norwegian, Japanese, Italian, Thai teachers, and many others of various nationalities who have been some of the best teachers I've ever met. They have flawless spoken English, and they teach some mean grammar too. So just keep that in mind, and if you're studying to be an English teacher, that's amazing, obviously. But also just know that you can be amazing. And you being a non-native speaker has nothing to do with how well you can teach English. Non-native speakers are usually much better at grammar anyways. Okay, so how to be fluent. Today we're going to focus on questions in speech. In English, we have something called reduced speech or more informally, connected speech. When you hear us use everyday English, it sounds faster, it sounds muddled. That's a great vocab. I feel a vocab word there, yes. It sounds blended and connected. <laughs> English on paper would be looking real cute, y'all, but sometimes it's just not realistic. Written English is just very different than spoken English. We know this. For example, when you begin to learn English, you say it like this. What is her name? But when you really speak in English, you say, what's her name? You combine the what and the is, and then a lot of times you delete the H on the her. What's her name? So this is an example of reduced speech. So we're going to divide this video into two types of questions. In this video, we're going to talk about who, what, where, when, why questions, and then part two, modal questions with modals. Okay, part one, who, what, where, when, why. The quick tip for these questions, when we use who, what, where, oh, when, why, oh my gosh, I forgot how. Oh, look who finally found your words. When we reduce these, we usually combine the first question word with the helping verb that comes after. Except for the times when you use these in isolation, like Why though? Anytime you ask a question in English using these, there's an auxiliary verb after. And don't forget, auxiliary verb is the fancy name for helping verb. Like auxiliary verb is what you might see in like books and stuff. The auxiliary verb have the auxiliary verb have can be found in most perfect tenses. My accent is so good! Okay, Mira, what is she doing? Why are you late? Where did you go last night? <laughs> oh! <laughs> huh! I was in my room praying. Duh. How did they get home? Boom! Peep the auxiliary verbs. Look, auxiliary verb, auxiliary verb, auxiliary verb, auxiliary verb. But then let's look at them in reduced speech, individually. What is she doing becomes, what's she doing? What's she doing? What's she doing? So we either contract or do this weird blended combined thing with the what and the is. Namely, we lose the T. And it's common to drop that ing ending as well. What's she doing? What's she doing? Instead of what is she doing? Yeah, that's too much. Okay, let's look at why are you late? Why are you late? Why are you late? Again, we combine the Y and the R. And sometimes people like me drop the auxiliary verb completely. Um, Fabio, why are you late to my class? Were you drinking last night? <laughs> no. Never heard that before. Okay, where did you go last night? Where'd you go last night? 
all the things here are happening. Where contracts with did, and then the you can either become where'd you go with a raised vowel, where'd you go, or where'd you go, where'd you go, where'd you go, with the regular lower u vowel. And we lose the t on last night. Where'd you go last night? Where'd you go last night? Americans rarely pronounce our T's when they're in the middle of a word or in the middle of a sentence. Oh, except for my ex-boyfriend. He always pronounced his T's and it's so funny to me. He would be like, um, I'm missing a button on my shirt. And I'm always over here like, okay, stop trying to be a hero. He's probably watching this, hey ho. How did they get home? How'd they get home? Contraction. In spoken English, we're always gonna choose the contractions over every single word. I don't know, because it's lazier, it's easier, it's more natural. Oh, and also that's important to remember as well. I'm focusing on English as spoken by Americans. But of course, not everybody wants to sound like an American. So just be aware British English speakers tend to pronounce things more clearly. And yes, you might be asking yourself, do I want to sound like an American? <laughs> of course, don't you want to sound like Karen? <laughs> Climate change, what's that? What is science? Help us. All right, moving right along, onward, ho. Are you talking to me? Part two, modals. Okay, quick question. What are the nine true modals in English? Go. No, really, go. Say them. Would, could, should, the uds, may, might, must, the ems, can, shall, and will, the randoms. Now, modals are a type of helping verb, yes, and they show us probability, possibility, obligation. And yes, there are semi-modals too, like have to and ought to. But today, we're only talking about modals as interrogatives or as question words, which means as interrogatives, their meaning changes a little bit and they're used as requests, permission, and advice. Anyways, let's start with would, could, should. Could you help me? Would you like a kiss? Come on, consent. Oh, should I call him? <laughs> oh, I'm, sorry. Oh. I'm gonna call him. Okay, we're gonna do something I really don't wanna do. Let's get really deep into the pronunciation here. Look at these letters or sounds. Think about the pronunciation of D. Tongue touching the roof of our mouth, close to our teeth, and then release. D, D, D. Put the D in dumb. Then think about Y. Y is very similar. D. Yeah, yeah. But with Y, your tongue is a little bit further back, whereas with D, your tongue is closer to your teeth. Da, yeah, da, yeah. Boop, boop. Back and forth, back and forth. So it makes sense that these sounds blend really easily for us. When the D is followed by a Y, it becomes, could you help me? Could you help me? Would you like a kiss? Would you like a kiss? That J sound that you're hearing comes from the mixing of the D and the Y. Duh, yeah, duh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, I, I feel like Dory. Huh? <laughs> Don't <laughs> do that. Too much orca. Oh my gosh. Speaking of Dory, oh, people be trying to cancel Ellen this year, y'all. Like. I don't know how I feel about that. I love Ellen, but apparently a lot of people don't, so. Godspeed, girl. Okay, the M's. We don't really use these much with American English as interrogatives, except for may. And even this is kind of formal. May I go to the bathroom? Usually we use can. Can I go pee? I mean, that's what I would say, but <laughs> don't say that to your teacher. Can I go to the restroom? Is what most people would say. But you can always ask me if you have to go pee because I'll be like, have fun. So yeah, we don't really reduce may, might, must with question words where they're the first word in the question. Ugh. And I guess a little grammar note, I guess technically may is correct instead of can because you're asking permission and not ability. May I go is permission. Can I go is ability. Ability like, are you able to go by yourself or do you need help? But again, not everyday people think much about that difference except for like the crazy English teachers. Ugh. I used to hate that growing up. Like imagine me as like a sassy little homo. And I'm like, can I go to the bathroom? And then here comes that English teacher. Yes, you may go to the bathroom. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then the third level of modals, let's talk about can first. It's actually kind of funny. It becomes this weird, almost like glottal noise. Like, k -k 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 can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? 
Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Again, the pronoun that follows it is often affected by the can. Mira, for example, can he give me a ride becomes can you give me a ride? Hey, can you give me a ride? Can you give, can you give me a ride? But no matter what, when we're speaking quickly, we kind of lose the vowel. We lose the A in can. As the first word in a question, will is not really contracted or reduced, but that's also because we don't really use will that much. In informal speech, will is kind of formal. There's a lot of other structures we use instead of will, like the going to structure or the present continuous, like are you coming tonight instead of will you come tonight? And are you gonna come tonight instead of will you come tonight? I could probably do a whole video on will. Anyways. And shall. Very British. You shall not pass! Shall we dance? Meaning, should we dance? Would you like to dance? Not super common for Americans, but occasionally. But in terms of reduced speech, mm, no. Okay. Did we make it through all of them? God, I hope so. <laughs> And a final note, these are the most common ways that Americans pronounce questions in reduced speech. However, this excludes uh, when we are emphasizing our question or our speech. One way to use emphasis in speech is to slow down and say every word clearly. Get it? See what I did there? See what I did there? Okay, imagine I have two scenarios for you. Scenario A. I walk into my friend's house and my friend says, oh, let me get my girlfriend. She's in the backyard. And I say, oh, what's she doing? What's she doing? I'm not really emphasizing that question, just, oh, what's she doing? What's she doing back there? Reduced speech, right? But we have scenario B, our scenario for emphasis. I'm walking down the street with my friend. All of a sudden, I see this lady peeing on the sidewalk. <laughs> this is a true story, by the way, from the other day. Welcome to Waikiki, Hawaii. So to emphasize, I say, yo, what is she doing? So you see how I slow down and I emphasize my words. So that's when we don't use as much reduced speech, emphasis. <sighs> okay, so that should do it for today. Speaking is hard for me. It's not my forte, but she can do it. Now I will admit my channel is more aimed at people who are more at the advanced level of learning English. So if you made it to this far in the video, <laughs> congratulations, bitch, you made it. <laughs> Thank you for giving me watch time. <laughs> but when you really get to the speaking aspect of advanced English, it's actually quite complicated. There's a lot of levels and situations and formality and context, rule breaking and just pronunciation ridiculousness all around. So if you want to see more speaking videos, let me know, comment below. Because remember, if you have a request for a video, I'll do it. It might just take me a couple weeks. TBH. Ooh, but for real, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your willingness to learn a language that is literally psycho, a language that makes me want to scream. So keep practicing. Never be ashamed of your mistakes. Love your native language and love yourself too. Uh, I know I do. Look at that fade. <laughs> Hashtag humble. <sighs> All right, later homie, love you long time, peace out.